seem like it's awful in the moment and that you're never going to get out of it and you know you may never play again like that could have easily been me but I think also just really focusing it in on what you're good at and being confident in that um, I look back and I think when I wasn't playing or wasn't doing well I was trying to be someone I wasn't as a player and I think every time that I kind of came back and trusted myself and had confidence in what I was really good at and really focused on that and trained on that, that that's when I was super successful. That was Lauren Barnes, defender for the OL Reign, the Seattle franchise in the National Women's Soccer League, or NWSL. After a standout college career with UCLA, where she made three Final Fours, Barnes spent her first pro season with the Philadelphia team in the WPS League. The league folded after a difficult first season for Barnes, and she took a break from the game. But when the NWSL launched a year later, Barnes threw her name into the draft and landed in the perfect situation in Seattle, where she has been a star for eight seasons. On this podcast, you'll hear about how she found the confidence to believe in herself and how she jumped back into the game she loves with the support of a strong group of friends and family. 400,000 high school girls play soccer in the U.S. every year, and only 200 will make it onto a roster with the top women's pro league. Those are some seriously long odds. On this show, we'll tell you about the amazing people that have beat the odds to make it at the highest level of sports. Lauren Barnes was born in 1989 in Arcadia, California, and grew up in nearby Upland, 35 miles from downtown LA. She was raised in a tight-knit family, and sports was always a big part of her life. I grew up with my dad and mom, so Gary Barnes and Joyce Barnes, and I have a brother who's four years older, Tyler Barnes. I just um, followed him around everywhere and never gave up on that. So he was very patient and allowed me to do that and wanted to have a little sister around, which is I, great. Uh, I ended up playing so many sports because of him. We grew up on a cul-de-sac, so I played sports till the street lights went on and that's when we came back in. So that's kind of how I was raised. Her father played hoops at UC Santa Barbara and she says the Barnes household was a basketball first family. While they were not watching English Premier League when she was younger, the U.S. women's national team victory at the 1999 World Cup left a big impression on 10-year-old Lauren. I remember it really, really well. Um, obviously being at home and after it happened, me and my brother were outside shooting PKs because that's where they ended up going, you know, and that's like the famous scene from that. So, yeah, I definitely remember it and I remember where I was. Around that time, Barnes started playing with a local travel soccer club, Arsenal FC. While most elite players hopped from club to club, Barnes stayed with her team, located only 10 minutes from her home, until she went off to college. I didn't pay for any of my club soccer because our coaches did it for free, which is like so crazy. And to be fair, he was a professional soccer player. And then our manager was just like a dad who had lost a daughter who played soccer and then just wanted to kind of give so back. We literally so. had a group that kind of bought into his um, ideas and theories. and. You know, I, I always think it's such a special and unique situation um, for club soccer, especially nowadays. And I think it's definitely made me who I am today as a player. Yeah, we traveled from D.C. to Vegas to Northern California, Southern California. So all over for those major tournaments. Barnes was part of a stacked group of female soccer players in California that she competed against on a regular basis. Some big names were like Alex Morgan. She, I think she went to Diamond Bar maybe, so she wasn't too far off. She's Southern California as well. Um, Chris, Christian Press as well. Um, we played against rival uh, clubs. She was Sid the Rue, and I played with Lauren Chaney, and just so many athletes that have gone to do such great things. Like To be able to go back and look at that and say I've crossed paths with more than a handful is – super cool for me. <laughs> Barnes attended the local school, Upland High, and was a strong student. Just like a small knit town, I guess. Um, I loved growing up there, you know, one high school, but my graduation class was probably like over a thousand. So it was a big high school. So, um, we were a huge sports school as well. Our football did really well when I was growing up. Um, both our water polo men's and women's won like five back-to-back -back CIF. Um, soccer, we won CIF as well. And as a standout at the high school and club level, Barnes was on the radar in an early age for the ODP, the Olympic Development Program for U.S. Soccer. To um, ODP, 
and then you went to regionals. So every time there's like some type of tournament where you're being identified at all times and it just went from one level to the next. So it went regional, it went state, regional, and then country, obviously. And so I started at U17. As graduation approached in 2007, college was an easy decision for Barnes. UCLA was her top pick and they offered when she was still in 11th grade. It was a dream school for me. Far enough away from home, but close enough to go back whenever I wanted to. My family got to see all the games, you know, like that's always fun. After a high school career that came easy for Barnes, the competition was a major step up on the field at the collegiate level. UCLA, you were never given <laughs> any like time to breathe where you're like, oh, like I feel like I've actually solidified a spot and that no one's coming after you. Like every year a new generation of kids came in and you know, each generation better than the next was something. Um, but it was just always so competitive. Like even just being a defender playing against some of the best forwards in the world, like every day my job was so hard and so exhausting. Barnes jumped right in and contributed as a starting defender her freshman year. The Bruins had a powerhouse squad that fell in the final four three years in a row from 2007 through 2010. I always think about the final fours that we went to and lost. It stings a little bit, but they are good memories and it's tough to get there and, um, you know, be that competitive year in, year out and making sure that your team's, um, you know, really competing for the tournament. So I still take a lot of pride in that regardless, you know, saying like we've never won anything like still hurts to this day, but um, you know, the, those final fours are some, something really special. In 2007, when Barnes first entered college, the Women's Professional Soccer, or WPS, league launched. The league attracted the top women's players, but was on shaky financial ground when she graduated. Barnes was selected 15th overall by the Philadelphia Independents in the 2011 draft that was highlighted by Alex Morgan as the top pick. But Philadelphia was stacked with veteran players, and Barnes struggled to make a mark in her rookie season. I never even stepped on the field as um, a rookie, never played a minute for a match. Um, so that was like very eye-opening from coming from a Division One UCLA, making a lot of Final Fours and then going pro and then just being like, nah, you're not there yet. So that was really hard to take. I always thought like I deserved a chance maybe to prove myself. Um, you always want that as an athlete. like. I was definitely working super hard and then I think having to learn how to um, adapt with that and still making sure that you're bringing your best in every day and really focusing on you and like what you're good at and not really letting anyone tell you that like you're not, I think was huge for me to learn at an early age, especially going into the pro life. The experience had Barnes discouraged. She went through a tough time. I honestly thought like, look, I gave it a go. I'm not good enough to be a pro. Like I. I honestly put all my efforts into it and like didn't play. My confidence was so low um, and I was playing with one of the best teams in the league. We went to the finals and um, I was just trying to measure myself to other people, which um, I don't think was the best way to go about it. After that season in 2011, the WPS league folded, sending women's soccer into a chaotic state. Barnes made the decision to take time off from the game and she took a role as an assistant women's soccer coach at University of California, Riverside. Then in 2013, a new women's league formed, the National Women's Soccer League, or NWSL. Players on existing WPS rosters were assigned to teams, and there was a supplemental draft for non-rostered players like Barnes. She had a big decision to make, stick with coaching or make another run as a player. UC Riverside head coach Nate Gonzalez gave Barnes the push she needed to get back on the pitch. I'm like, do I put my name back in the draft? Do I go through all this again? Um, do I have to uproot my life and go move somewhere and then for it to just fail again? It's like, what, what do you do? And so he like really encouraged me. And I remember sitting in the office, like kind of crying because I was deciding to put my name in the draft, but I was having such a good time coaching, but he's like, you should not be on the side of the line yet. Like you need to go out and play again and prove yourself. Barnes entered the supplemental draft. And it was then she met another coach that would have a big impact on her career, Laura Harvey of the Seattle Reign. The NWSL was spinning up quickly, and teams didn't have much time to research potential draft picks. Coach Harvey had been in England, and this was her first exposure to many of the U.S. players. She shared with us the story of drafting Barnes. 
I obviously had very limited uh, exposure to the US game at that point because I'd only just come over from England. So I, I got a contact that had been working in the previous league and they said to me, um, Lauren Barnes is someone that was young when the league forwarded previously, came out of UCLA and, and could be your type of player. So um, I hadn't met her, I hadn't seen her play live, but I picked her in that draft. And then first day of pre-season was the first time I met Lou. And yeah, just went from there really. So yeah, super random way to start a career with someone. Um, but thankfully it worked out pretty well for both of us. The rain turned out to be a great fit for Barnes. The team had stable financials and a supportive ownership led by Bill and Teresa Predmore. Our ownerships here um, is incredible. The Predmores, both Bill and Teresa, from day one have made my experience with the rain. They really created this environment that um, I knew that they wanted us to do the best we possibly can, but I also knew that we had the backing of them to kind of keep us in it with whatever it was. And the team had two of the most famous players from the U.S. women's national team, goalkeeper Hope Solo and forward Megan Rapino. Playing in front of Hope, I learned so much from her. She was 100% the first player out on the field, the last to leave. Um, she was an amazing competitor, um, loved to you know, push players to be better. Um, and I loved that about her. I loved watching her in her element in that sense. And Pino is just something else like in itself. She is so down to earth um, for being who she is. We'll always take the time to, whether it's learning something on the field, you know, it's just incredible, I think. So I think um, with those two players and Pino has been here since year one as well. So I've been with her for eight years. You know, she she really wants to win. She's a big competitor as well. The rain ascended to the top of the league in 2014 and 2015, losing in the finals in back-to-back -back seasons. Barnes flourished as well, earning postseason awards. Those two years were something special. Like, I still look at those two teams and think probably 100% the best in the w, uh, NWSL. Um, and we had players from all around the world, Japan, England, Wales. I always look back at those two years and just think about how fun it was and the, the style that we played and how well we all got along and, you know, just having that environment and that experience in sport is kind of what it's all about. And I always look back at those two years and I'll never forget them. On the rain, Barnes' team was star midfielder Jess Fishlock. The two became close friends and have played over 100 games together. When you come into that environment and you're not kind of a big personality and, and Lauren's not a, a big personality. She's a very caring, very sweet personality, but she's not loud. But I think what's great about Lauren in those environments is she can just focus on the football and then her football becomes her talk and her personality and then eventually she can grow into being then a bigger personality and a bigger leader. And that's exactly what has happened at this club. Coach Harvey had this to say about Barnes's time with the rain, which included winning the Defender of the Year award after the 2016 season. Just saw something change in her where she became more dedicated. She took it all a little bit more seriously um, and became a bit of a leader within that because everyone knew that as a character, she was trustworthy, responsible, um, a really good human would do anything for anybody. People knew not only is she going to be there, but she's one of the best players in her position in the league and consistently has been that way for the past eight seasons. While Barnes had played with U.S. soccer through college, she'd yet to break in with the senior U.S. women's national team. After her strong play with the rain, she got her chance in 2016, but was not able to crack the stacked roster for the World Cup or Olympics. I got called into two camps, but I don't think it was necessarily in the cards for me. Um, I went to a She Believes Cup, but I didn't play any games. It was never capped. Knowing that there is a next level is literally like value in itself. So I just knew that I went there. I didn't play whatever, but I just being around at training and being around like the top soccer players in the world that I knew that I still was not there, you know, so it's better to know than not know. In the off seasons while playing with the rain, Barnes stayed sharp by going overseas to compete in Australia with her teammate Fishlock, 
on the Melbourne Victory Squad. Called in by Jess Fishlock, who's one of my best friends on the rain, and um, I've always given it to her, and she always laughs. She'll never take credit, but she's really kind of helped me find my way through the professional career for sure. And she brought me over to Victory. We played and we won a championship there, and then I ended up going back every year since. It's been an incredible experience. I love Australia. I love the people there, um, the lifestyle, the culture, everything about it. And it's been fun to also watch the W League grow as it has, you know, kind of parallel to the the U.S. the um, NWSL, and you do see a lot of Aussies come in and out of our um, league as well. And it's been incredible. Like they've been such great value for the NWSL and. By 2018, the magic was gone from the rain. Injuries and other roster turnover had resulted in two down seasons. And the rain brought in new coach, Vlatko Andonovsky, who made big moves that challenged Barnes' confidence in her game again. We had a coach changeover from Laura to Vlatko. Um, when he came in, um, I was a captain, so he took the captain badge off of me and dropped me, I think, from the first seven games. So for the first you know, five years, six years with Laura, I was a starter, captained with Jess Fishlock, and then kind of a new coach came in and really shook it, shook it up. And to be fair, it really lit a fire underneath me. And I'm so happy that it did happen. But at the time, it like seemed like my world was crumbling because I thought too, I thought that was my prime, that I was probably retiring pretty soon. And, um, you know, him coming in and kind of shaking that up shook my career up a bit too in, in such a positive way. We asked Coach Harvey what had changed for Barnes that allowed her to handle the demotion and struggles in 2018. Previously, if that had happened to her, she would have had a mindset where she wasn't sure if it was worth fighting for because she wasn't sure she belonged. And I think when Vlatko went in and, you know, things weren't going the way Lou wanted, I think deep down inside, she believed she belonged. She believed she deserved to have a role in that team. And I think that's what fueled the fire inside of her to, to prove herself right, probably more than proving him wrong. Hard work and a renewed confidence led to Barnes earning back her role on the team quickly. She made the postseason honor roll again following the 2019 season. Here's Coach Harvey again. She got back into the starting lineup and became a, a solid fixture again um, as part of a team that she, she believed she belonged in. And I think that, that that's just a really good story of, of how you can overcome something like that, which a lot of players go through that adversity and, and don't know how to handle it. And I think she, she's a great example of believing in yourself rather than believing that you have to prove the coach wrong. Barnes is still with the Seattle Reign for the 2020 season. The league launched a quarantine tournament in July in Salt Lake City, Utah. It is a roller coaster. Like, you just don't know what to expect. I think I would be naive to say that I'm not worried about things and making sure that I'm staying as safe as possible and literally following every single protocol possible. We're all still in masks, and um, everywhere we go, we're in masks. We're getting tested. Um, everyone in our staff is being tested. So, there is definitely a bubble that we have, and um, I feel safe in it. So, I do feel safe and I am honestly just so happy to be able to be training with the team again. We asked Barnes about the people that were so instrumental in supporting her journey to the top of the women's game. I always give so much credit to my family because they had to do the driving, the early mornings and all that stuff. So 100% my family, but I think when I kind of wanted to narrow down and when I came into a pro, I'll always give so much credit. I told you to Just Fishlock, who's really really like amplified my career and has believed in me since year one and to be fair going into year one after the year I had at WPS I just was very unsure of myself and she's really really helped me um, become who I am and I've mentioned before Laura Harvey as well because she gave me the chance to kind of come back into the league and you know be who I am and be how I wanted to play. An area that Barnes is passionate about is improving pay for women in soccer at all levels. I 100% think we deserve, um, you know, everything equally for sure. Uh, we put in just the same amount of work and do everything the exact same. So I do really believe that. And I, I hope one day that girls can, regardless of, you know, position on the team, can make a living out of playing professional soccer. And I think that would be incredible to see. 
Given the salary structure in the NWSL, most women players don't expect to get rich playing soccer. Barnes spoke about what drives her. We definitely don't play because we want to make money. We play because we love it. And um, I'm just like so happy that I think the generations to follow me will definitely have more opportunities when it comes to financially, whether it's with sponsors or, you know, clubs being able to generate more money and whatever it looks like. But it's definitely grown and it's really fun to see that there is girls that can make an entire life out of it now. Um, but yeah, I think when I, oh gosh, when I was drafted, I mean, after tax and stuff, I mean, I was hardly able to buy food and pay for gas. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Outside of the game, Barnes has a number of causes she is focused on, mainly around the environment and the community. The advocate for vegan, and that's for a lot of different reasons, and mostly environmental. And this year, I've kind of um, focused on measuring my carbon footprint from the tournament. I work with Water First in Seattle as well, which they do clean um, systems. And I went and traveled to Ethiopia with them and built some in the villages with them. I love working with the community. So we do, we are connected with Austin Everett, which is a cancer foundation. And we get to bring um, an Austin Everett kid that's been either affected by their family has or they have personally and they get to come out and be a captain. We asked Barnes to look back on our uncommon journey through the professional ranks. She had this to say. It seemed like it's awful in the moment and that you're never going to get out of it and you know you may never play again like that could have easily been me. Um, but I think also just really really focusing it in on what you're good at and being confident in that. Um, I look back and I think when I wasn't playing or wasn't doing well, I was trying to be someone I wasn't as a player. And I think every time that I kind of came back and trusted myself and had confidence in what I was really good at and really focused on that and trained on that, that that's when I was super successful. Barnes learned a lot of lessons over the course of her career. Here are a few. Knowing that if you fail, it's okay. You can kind of still make it. I always look back and I am so proud to talk about my journey. So I just want that to kind of come across. Sometimes you just don't realize the life that we live isn't always so fun and famous. You know, it's there's so much in between that can make or break you. Her longtime teammate, Jess Fishlock, had this to say about what drives Barnes. It starts from you love the game and then it goes into you're just competitive as shit, right? Like you can't, you can't stop that buzz. And I think that that's kind of the older you get, the more it's because you want to win. The younger it is, it's more because you just love it. You know, you love football, you want to get in there. But as you get older, you still love it, but now you just want to win. And I think that those two combinations with, with Lauren are why she's still here. While she did eventually win a number of championships in Australia, she's still chasing the big win in the United States after coming so close at UCLA and with the rain. Call them the OGs for the rain that have been here since year one, but we're still chasing that championship. <laughs> We got to get it. You know, we've been to a couple finals and um, a couple playoffs, but, you know, we've fallen short a little bit. So you always kind of have that drive. And um, so that's a big reason why I'm still playing. That is our story of Lauren Barnes, professional soccer player, who's hoping to get that first U.S. championship this month with the Seattle Reign in the NWSL. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Beat the Odds and can find some inspiration and motivation in the career journey of Lauren Barnes. If you did, please rate and comment on our show and please subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss our next amazing episode. We would like to give a special thanks to Haley Rosen and the team at Just Women's Sports for introducing us to Lauren Barnes. Just Women's Sports is changing the landscape of media coverage from women's athletics. Check them out at justwomensports.com. Beat the Odds is a production of Beyond the Game Media. I'm your host, Brian Zwerner. Bo Johnson is our sound engineer. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.